Hey guys, it's Charlene. I'm taking part in the all new video hop for the brand new Stamp Wheel 2.0 that has been released. You guys see me use my Stamp Wheel all the time. This guy here, you can see it is well loved. So we're gonna take a look at Stamp Wheel 2.0 and I'm gonna let you know my thoughts and then we are going to make a card with it. So let's open this up. We have a ultra sticky grid mat to go with it, which is great. And then here we have the stamp wheel plate as well as, come on, come on, the base. So really well packaged, which is nice. Let me move this out of the way. The first thing I want to look at is a size comparison. So here is that original stamp wheel. You can see the stamp wheel 2.0 is quite a bit bigger here. Um, and this is like a metallic gold versus this is more of a um, just plain gold, I guess. Um, don't sure how to describe that, but much bigger plate, much bigger work surface. You can see here the Stample 2.0 has a ruler on the side and then a ruler on this side as well. And then the other thing is that this piece here is removable. You can take it out. So this gives you all kinds of additional options. The acrylic top plate here is gonna have a piece of plastic on it, which protects it. And once you remove that, it will be clear. I wanna point out a few differences with these grid plates. You can see that on the original stamp wheel, this is a dark gray line, and it just has these little dash kind of like marks on every other line going all the way across. Now on the stamp wheel 2.0, hopefully this shows up, you can see that those markings are white and the line goes actually all the way around. So I do like that the line goes all the way around. I think that part is awesome, but I do wish they had kept the darker gray um, just because it's a little bit easier to see, but I'll probably get used to it. It's not like I can't see it. I'm just used to seeing the gray. So we have our ultra sticky matte grid here very similar to the one that comes in the original stamp wheel. This one's just larger so that it's gonna fit directly inside of your stamp wheel. Now I am going to look and see, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did on my first one. It's kind of hard to show on camera, but there is a bumpy side and then there is a smooth side to your mat. So you want the bumpy side to be face down in your stamp wheel because then you won't have any air bubbles under there and also it's easier to take out if you want to take it out. I'm going to prep this in the same way that I prepped my original stamp wheel. You can see underneath down here under the sticky mat I had attached the clear transfer piece with those grid lines so that way I could see it through my sticky mat, but it would still be sticky on the edges to stay in there and not move around. To do that, I've taken off the back piece here and then I'll take off the front piece. Okay, I've taken off the front piece. I've brought out my large paper trimmer because I need the extra length here because this is a larger piece of acetate and I'm gonna cut this down. So essentially I have um, about an inch taken off of each side. There's my first cut, my second cut, my third cut, and my fourth cut. So now I should be left here with a square that is seven by seven inches. Altenew does sell grids that you can put down here in the base of your stamp wheel before you put this sticky mat on there. So that might be worth looking at for you if you don't wanna deal with cutting this transparency. And even if you do get something like that, I would suggest hanging on to this large grid transparency because it's so, so helpful for lots of other kinds of situations. To line this up so that there is that inch going all the way around, 
you should have about seven of the little squares going in from each side. This part can be a little bit tricky to do because your mat is going to obviously want to stick to everything on that other side. So I'm actually just gonna do mine kind of midair um, to try and keep it from sticking to everything. Because once it is in place and down, that's not gonna shift on you at all. You can then go ahead and just like press this down really well. And you're gonna be able to see all of those grid lines through there. Once you have it down in there, you can see the grid lines are pretty easy to see. And those will actually get easier to see over time I found with my original stamp wheel. I'm actually really excited about these rulers on the side. I think that that is in awesome upgrade here. It does still have the nice feet here in the four corners and so it's not going to move once it's down on your surface which was really nice. And your plate should fit in here very easily. You should not struggle to have your plate go in and once it's in it should be nice and secure. And so you can see if you're not familiar with the stamp well this makes it so that you can easily create wreaths and all kinds of different things. You can store your plate separately. It does have a circle in the plate, so you could hang this on a hook or something like that. Now, if you really are struggling for space, maybe uh, a good idea would be you could put some type of clip that you could um, clip onto this you know, and have it hang like that. That's probably how I would do it if I needed to get this out of the way and didn't have the storage space that I do. I would just get like, you know, a potato chip bag clip or something to hang on to this that has a hole in it. And then you could use that and hang it up. For purposes of size comparison, I also did want to show you here is my mini Misty. And then here is my original Misty. You can see the stamp wheel gives you a lot more square footage for stamping. Okay, we are going to take an entire sheet of cardstock. This is 80 pound Nina cardstock solar white and it's eight and a half inches by 11 inches. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just pull this little side piece off here. This pops right out, super easy to do. Set it aside. And then I can put my entire sheet of cardstock in here and it's just going to hang out the edge like that. Super easy. So this will stick to our sticky mat. I have here the Mixed Blooms Outline Stamp Set from the Craft Your Life Project Kit. This is, I think, my favorite one I've ever gotten. It is so versatile. I did a whole video on this one, so definitely check that out if you haven't seen it. And I'm gonna take this big stamp here. I put it down here in the bottom right hand corner and I'll lift it up with my plate. And so this is gonna make it so that I can stamp it about four times. I'm gonna see how this goes. So let's go ahead and flip this over and get our plate ready. I was having a bit of a panic attack because I couldn't find my jet black fresh dye ink. I'm a big fan of this ink, but I found it. So I'm going to go ahead and ink up my stamp. All right, we have that nice and inked. So I will flip this over and go ahead and stamp it down. Lift that up. Oh, it's stamped beautifully. I'm going to go ahead and ink it again. I'll flip this over and make sure I get it lined up. There we go. Stamp it down and lift. So pretty. Okay, now I'm gonna decide how much I want to turn this. I'm gonna go ahead and first start by stamping it in the complete opposite corner. Inked that up, so we'll flip this over now and press. And if you're not familiar with a stamp wheel, it does get easier with the flipping over time. And lift this up. Very pretty. Let's do a second stamping. I do have an entire video about the original stamp wheel, so I'm not gonna go into all of the features of the stamp wheel in this video uh, because they're pretty awesome and innovative. Um, I was very, very pleased after I got my first stamp wheel. So I'll link that video at the end. And if you're new to the stamp wheel, I suggest you definitely check that one out as well. 
We'll go ahead and press this down a second time and lift. There we go. And now I'm going to figure out and see how my placement works here. Oh, I think that's going to just fit in there beautifully. Just like that. Okay, perfect. So we'll flip this over. I did go ahead and let a little bit of ink get on there because that way I can remember um, how I had it lined up. So we'll ink that, flip this over, make sure I still have it in the right spot. I do. Go ahead and press that down and lift. Mm, pretty, pretty. So you can see this is actually starting to look like a wreath, right? So we have this large floral bouquet sentiment that we're using here from the Mixed Blooms kit. And we're creating a giant wreath with it, which is awesome in and of itself. And you could use this as a decor piece or something like that. But I'm actually going to cut this piece up and make multiple cards and lift. I am also a big fan of how easy it is to clean your stamps without having to worry about accidentally getting ink on your paper because your stamp isn't anywhere near the paper, right? When your plate is like this, you can easily mess around, move your stamp, whatever you need to do. And you don't have to worry about any ink getting on your paper under there. Part of why I love this kit so much is you have this outline stamp, but then you also have a silhouette style stamp. So you could actually just stamp with this and create all of your color that way and then still stamp the black outline over it when you're done. Very pretty. I'm gonna actually come in and use the stencils. Now for this, I only want to color the blooms. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and mask off with tape all of the portions of the stencils that are for the leaves. Okay, I'm gonna lift this up. It lifts up really easily. And then I can just kind of place my stamped image a little bit more towards the center. So that way I get some of the sticky mat exposed here for when I'm adding my stencils. I'm gonna color this larger flower with some purple wine. So I'll just start in the center and work my way out on all these petals. For our smaller flower, I'm gonna be using Be Grateful. So I'll just bring that down and get this nice and purpley. For this top portion here, these are kind of like little berries almost, seeds. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna bring in some mid yellow. Okay, so I can go ahead and carefully lift this stencil up and then I can just turn my paper and do the exact same thing. I've already got all the inks out. So this makes it really easy to do everything kind of assembly style. And we'll take this off again here. We've got the first stencil all finished all the way around. I did lightly wipe off my stencil so that way I can try and keep ink where it's supposed to go. But now we are going to come in here with the bottom portion of this stencil. So I'll line this up. Now for this portion, I'm bringing in some Cosmic Berry. I'm just going to bring in a little cardstock scrap to kind of help me keep me from getting ink where it's not supposed to go there. And I'm working my way from the center going out on these. I'll bring in that same Be Grateful, but I'm gonna do it slightly lighter here for the small flower. Got my Coral Berry. That's what I'm gonna use for this flower. And I'll use my cardstock scrap here just to cover up those top little areas. Bring this in. And then I have my new favorite orange here, which is the Autumn Blaze. And this I'm just going to go ahead and tap right into our two little remaining pieces here. Okay, let's lift this up and see how we are doing. I'll turn this and repeat that process for the rest of them. Okay, we finished this last one. Take that stencil off. And then I can bring in the top of stencil number two and this is going to color in this top portion of the purple flower the center of this flower as well as this small flower down here and bring in our be grateful I'll just do this a little darker towards the base and i'll bring in some of that same autumn blaze for the center of this floral and i'll bring back our mid yellow for this small floral okay we can lift this piece up now 
And that is going to be our colored florals. I'll repeat that all the way around with the other three. Finished the last stencil, so we'll peel this up. You could do the greenery, but I'm going to leave it just with black and white. And so I could either cut this down into four panels and use it that way. But what I'm going to do, which I absolutely love, is I'm going to use this to create two A2 size cards. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to score at five and a half inches. And then I'm going to go ahead and fold this in half. Then I'll take my paper trimmer, put this in here, and I'm going to cut this uh, four and a quarter inches. Now I have two A2 size cards. Now you can see these are so pretty because they have that added floral on the back. It's so unique. I absolutely love that. I die cut a sentiment from the Versatile Greetings die set, just this hugs here. This is going to be a nice small-ish word die, so it'll look good with our beautiful florals and I cut the shadow from black cardstock and then the actual sentiment from white cardstock. I also have a couple of pieces of iridescent confetti that I'm going to add to the front. If I did this again I'd probably do these in 110 pound instead of 80 just so they're a little bit more sturdy but you can see they're super cute. I did the same thing on this one with the word dye as well as the iridescent confetti and how fun is that to have that beautiful, beautiful stenciled and stamped image on the background there. Really fun. As I mentioned, this is part of an all to new video hop. So definitely check out the description for all the details regarding the hop. I hope you guys picked up some tips and tricks today. Please be sure to like and subscribe as well as hit that notification bell so that I can continue to bring you more crafty content in the future. Until next time. Happy crafting.